having your own car in college, especially if you live in a typical college town and not one that's integrated into a city like NYU or GW, is starting to be seen by a lot of people as more of a necessity than a luxury. And now just having completed my college career and going two years without a car and two years with a car, knowing many friends that went four years with or without as well, I'm gonna be sharing some of the reasons why you might need a car during college and when you may need that car or why you may not at all. I'll start out by saying that yes, a lot of colleges do end up requiring freshmen to just not have a car at all. There are a few exceptions, but for the most part, you can't really get around it. And it's one of those unpopular decisions that I actually really support. Basically, having all freshmen live on campus without cars requires everyone to learn the local public transit at least a little bit in order to get to class and get around town, which public transit is a big topic related to this that I'll get to a bit later. But I think even if you are going to have a car from sophomore through senior year, just having a general knowledge of how the bus system, the tram system, whatever system your college has works is really important because what if something happens to your car? What if you don't have a parking permit and you have to get to class using the bus? To learn all of that by getting around in freshman year without relying on your car. It also just means freshmen are just going to be on campus more without the ability to go off super easily. So there's just going to be a lot of people in the dorms, on main campus, and libraries everywhere. And I believe that allows you to meet a lot more people and kind of just puts everyone on a level playing field at first. If you're not a safe student from far or an international student, you likely wouldn't even have access to a car at that point anyway. So yeah, freshman year, I don't see really any scenario where you should need to have a car unless you have a disability or something, or if you're commuting obviously, or if you somehow ended up living in an apartment that's really far away. I think that's probably the best way to break this video up is by year. Because however much you need a car changes pretty drastically based on what year you're in, because that also impacts where you live, likely you are to get a parking spot etc etc so on that note we move into sophomore year and that's when the divide starts to happen a little bit I'm going to put having a car in sophomore year assuming you're living on campus I'll get to off campus a bit later I'll put it as nice to have but not necessary at all so the place you're living in sophomore year is probably gonna be just as close if not even closer to the center of campus than during freshman year so you're gonna have no problem getting to class getting to campus and whatnot you're still gonna be living in a dorm situation so you're probably not gonna be needing groceries all that much you're still gonna have a dining hall plan but I still have it as nice to have because sophomore year you can still have a parking spot it's just probably not gonna be anywhere near your dorm the way it works at my school at UNC is sophomores can apply to park at a few different lots on campus but all of them are usually a 10 -ish minute walk from where sophomores live and a 15 20 minute walk from class so you're not going to use it to get to class at all just to use whenever you have stuff off campus and if you don't end up winning the lottery for any of those you have to park it in a lot that's pretty far off campus that you need a bus to get to so it really becomes like a park and ride lot at that point so you really don't go to it unless you really need to and you're willing to take that 15 minute bus to get up there because even if you take it out for an evening you can't park it back on campus this parking is going to become restricted the next morning so you have to park it back at that lot take the bus all the way back to your dorm and it's really inconvenient but i think it's still worth doing if and only if your family has an extra card that you're able to use and you don't mind paying the three to four hundred dollars for a yearly parking permit if that's the case then go for it just apply there's no harm in really just having it in case you want to go on campus for every sort of reason but i definitely don't think it's worth buying one in sophomore year unless you're living off campus but even then i'm gonna put it as a maybe it really depends how far off campus you live because at least at my school, a lot of the off-campus apartments are still connected by the UNC bus network or some even have private shuttles to get to campus. So if that's the case, I would also just keep it as nice to have. But if you live more than like a seven minute drive away, you don't have many friends that also have cars and maybe you win the lottery for a commuter parking spot on campus, then I would say it nears into necessary category. But for the most part, I would say sophomore year, you definitely do not need one. And then we get into junior year. And if you are still living on campus, then I would say, all the sophomore rules still apply. I would apply for an on-campus parking spot that's closer to your dorm because juniors have a higher chance of getting those. And if you do get one, then it might be worth getting a car for that. But if you end up getting in that off-campus lot again, I don't think it's worth it. But most likely in junior year, you're gonna start to move off-campus to an apartment or a house that's a few minutes away from campus. And the first thing to check with this is whether the apartment or house that you have offers parking for the apartment or house. And if you haven't looked at this before, that might sound really weird, but trust me, there's a lot of college apartments they only have a limited amount of parking spots, so they do a parking lottery for people to even get a spot at their own apartment. And even if you get it, it's usually like $80 to $150 per month. Now those are more of the upper end apartments. Some of the ones that aren't as nice will offer free parking. Just first come first serve like a normal apartment complex. But I would say the majority of apartments that people stay in at, at my school have limited paid parking spots. So once you figure that out and go through the lottery and see if you get a spot or not, if you end up winning a spot that's right at your apartment, I would say a car is definitely worth it at this point. Even if you don't get a commuting permit to park on campus for classes, you can use the bus to get to and from campus on normal days and then 
in the evenings once you're back to your apartment you can easily come back to campus and park for free at least that's how my school works it's free parking after 5 p.m or you can go to the grocery store because at this point you're probably gonna be cooking a lot more or you might have a gym membership off campus you're gonna need to buy a bunch of random stuff for your house or apartment at target and you're gonna start to want to eat out a lot more if all of that is true i would say yes get a car still if you don't win one at your apartment i would say look into different off-campus parking options at your school close by to your apartment and if you still can't find one it's not that big of a deal it's still not absolutely necessary to have a car but you might have to rely on some people that do have a car or like instacart or something like that to get you your groceries and household things i will say i knew a friend that was an international student at south africa that went the first half of their junior year without a car but then just realized it was really inconvenient and it wasn't really working. We bought a cheap old Honda Civic and used it for the rest of the year and it worked out pretty well. On the same note though, I do know an, another international student from Korea that was perfectly fine without a car for all of their junior year. It was a little inconvenient, but it wasn't too bad because he had a bike. And this brings me to the topic of bikes, motorcycles, mopeds, and scooters. Alternative modes of transportation, basically. If you're from out of state or international, I would strongly consider this as you move into your junior year. If you're willing to ride one, you can get a cheap moped for $500 to $1,000, even a high tier electric bike. And the beauty of those is you do not need to have a campus parking permit. You might need to buy it like a motorcycle permit for 20 bucks or something like that. But after that, you can basically park anywhere on campus. Most lots will have designated motorcycle spots and they'll be right next to where your classes are, which is so convenient. It's better than having a car and parking. And yeah, if you're willing to make that investment, I think that is a really solid way to go. That's actually what I was thinking of doing if I didn't get a spot in my apartment in junior year. But yes, that still might not be as good for groceries and things like that. I really enjoyed having my car junior year. It was super convenient because I had like on-campus club meetings at 7 p.m. like two or three days every single week so I didn't have to bother taking the bus back and forth after I already got back from classes I could just drive once I got back to my apartment once and then that brings us to senior year and at this point you're probably either living in the same place that you did junior year or a different apartment or house but I know very few seniors that stayed on campus this is all just assuming you're still in the vicinity of campus but anyway senior year is when I would start to seriously consider getting a car if you haven't already. My last year, senior year, was the first year that I was actually able to get a good on-campus parking spot. It was actually in that deck that's right there. It was like halfway between my business school classes over here and main campus over there. It worked super well. I basically drove to class four out of five days a week, the other one being the one day where I didn't need to go to the B school. So I just took the bus to main campus. But it was super convenient because I could work on my own schedule. I didn't have to worry about quickly checking the bus times on Google Maps. Oh no, I missed it. When's the next one? Popping up Transloc and Netflix. Netflix next bus every two seconds. If you ended up getting a motorcycle or a bike, in the previous year then probably keep using that if you don't have the ability to get a car but this is also the point where you're probably starting to think about what you're doing after college and if that is most likely going to involve living in a city that requires a car for you to commute to and from work then it might not be a bad idea to, to invest early in a car and just get that out of the way so you can keep it for next year senior year is probably when you're also going to have the most amount of friends that you know that you want to go to a different city or try a bunch of different new restaurants off campus um, I know I did that a ton this year. I visited my friends in Raleigh at NC State quite a bit because I had my car and it was great. So senior year is the first where I will label it as necessary to have some form of quicker transport. Doesn't have to be a car, but motorcycle, bike, all of that. I just think senior year would have been extremely difficult without any of that. It's possible, don't get me wrong, necessary is a loose term and I know people who have done that. But if you have the money or your parents are willing to get you one of those, I would highly suggest doing so before senior year. So yeah, what else did I use my car for aside for what I mentioned? Well, in junior and senior year, most of your friends are also likely living off campus at apartments or houses. And going from apartment to apartment or house to house doesn't really work too well on public transport unless you're like my friend Mark, who did not have a car senior year and Ubered literally everywhere. But I'm assuming that got very expensive. Um, so yeah, just having that convenience to be able to just drive to your friend's apartment instead at whatever time of day is really nice also on weekends and holidays especially bus services are usually reduced and there's free parking on campus and sometimes even in the downtown too so it barely costs anything to drive on those days and whenever you're doing random things like getting a haircut or going to play basketball all of that stuff are things you don't really think about until you get to it and you're like well i don't really have a way to get there and okay i feel like i've made this sound super pro car but again freshman sophomore and maybe even some of junior year i don't think it's necessary at all to have a car especially if your college town has a good public transit system running around it um chapel hill transit which is the one at unc 
is honestly really efficient. I hate on it at times because sometimes the buses are delayed and whatnot, but for the most part, it's fully free. Um, they're finally starting to add app where you can live track the buses. So yes, like please get familiar with that. And if you end up realizing in the middle of sophomore year that you're doing totally fine with it, just try going to and from whatever apartment you're gonna live in the next year and see how the route was, see how long it took, see if it was super crowded during popular class times. So yeah, there really isn't a one answer for all of these questions, but hopefully this helped give you a little direction. Again, hit me up with any questions you have about it. I'm going to go drive back to my house now and um, enjoy Chapel Hill for the last couple of weeks that I am here. Thank you all so much for watching. I shall see you later. Peace out.